This video is going to concern why I shoot and what I shoot. Uh, I haven't prepared for it very well. It's, uh, I'm sitting in my storage shed. <laughs> it's raining outside, or actually my garage, it's raining outside and uh, wind is blowing real hard so I closed the, closed the garage door and I'm kind of stuck in here <laughs> and very very uh, what's the word I'm looking for close quarters and <laughs> cramped anyway why I shoot well I've been shooting uh, since I was a very young boy I'm guessing maybe seven or eight was the first time I ever shot uh, my father was in the army I'm an army brat and uh, he knew the range range officer uh, out at the ranges in uh, all the different places that we've lived, mostly Germany and France. And uh, he got me to where I could, uh, got me the opportunity to fire all the small arms that were in the uh, Army arsenal at that time. Uh, M1s, 30 caliber carbines, BAR, 30 cal machine gun, 50 cal machine gun, uh, actually, I even uh, shot a rifle grenade at one time. Now this was, now we're talking back in the in the fifties, early fifties, and then once we got to uh, we moved to France from Germany, and that was in the late fifties, early sixties. Uh, did the same thing there, and then for some reason I kind of got away from it. I uh, just you know I had other things going on in my head. Once I got out of high school, I went to university in, in France. And when I came back to the States, I just didn't have the time. Uh, basically, I didn't have any of my own weapons. I had a 22 caliber rifle way back when, but that was, uh, it was just a little cheap German-made one, uh, single shot. Anyway, uh, then I got into air rifles very heavily. I still have one, and I got an air pistol. I don't shoot those anymore because they're essentially illegal here in Las Vegas. When I was in Henderson, you could shoot them uh, as long as you were on private property. Uh, but here in Las Vegas, uh, you can't even shoot them on private property. So, anyway, uh, I was in Saudi Arabia for a long time, over over 20 years, and uh, there we shot air rifles. Uh, we weren't allowed to own a regular gun. But uh, being an expat, but we, you know, they had no problem with air rifles, and uh, so I got away from all that stuff. I had no no regular firearms for you know, a number of years, and uh, but I was always proficient at what I did. Now, I got back into it about ten years ago. I had a stroke, and it was it was I wouldn't say it was mild, but it wasn't a really bad one. But it did it did affect my my hearing my memory, and my left side, and I'm left-handed, so uh, when I eat and ride, I'm semi-ambidextrous, so I can shoot with either hand, but anyway, I got back into shooting because uh, after my stroke, and I got pretty much recovered, but my, my head still is a little messed up uh, as far as being able to concentrate. Uh, my mind tends to wander. Uh, I forget things pretty easily, so I took up shooting again, yeah, spent a bunch of money on guns, <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm sticking to the small caliber, Every, anything under 30, any, anything under uh, actually 270, I don't shoot 270. Uh, I have a 22 long rifle, a 22 mag, a 204, and a 25 out 6, and I'll show those to you a little bit later. Uh, anyway, the reason, you know, when you're shooting, and especially for me as a precision shooter, you know, you have to concentrate and you have, you have to control your breathing, you know, all the different things that are involved in, uh, you know, your concentration, attention to detail, you know, all of those things, you know, and that helps. I mean, I shoot two, three times a week. Uh, I've done some videos, as you've as you probably already seen, and... Uh, but I don't, I don't necessarily shoot videos every time I go out. It's just, you know, it can be a pain in the butt, and then I've got to do all the, all of the uh, editing and that. Besides that, who, you know, it's kind of boring to sit there and watch somebody just shoot, <laughs> unless I have a reason for it. 
uh, I don't do it. In fact, what I'm going to do here in the near future is uh, do a, a video on, uh, on, 20, on 22 Magnum uh, ammunition. I've got like 10 or 12 different uh, different makes or different uh, makes of ammunition that I'll that I'll uh, evaluate after I get them weighed out and uh, the rims uh, mic'd and all that. Anyway, so uh, to go on further a little bit, uh, I have done some competition shooting. In fact, I just came back from one in Arizona where I shot the uh, 22 long rifle at 50 yards, uh, 22 mag at 100 yards and 204, uh, which was kind of grouped in with a bunch of other stuff, uh, different calibers, at uh, 300 yards. And I did actually, for me, I did pretty well. Uh, there were, what, I forget exactly, 83 people involved in it, and I finished fourth in the 22 caliber, or 22 long rifle. I finished sixth in the, in the uh, 22 mag, and I finished second in the, uh, in the 300 yard. So anyway, let's just leave it at that. I'm going to pull out the rifles one at a time, show them to you, you know, so you know what I shoot, and uh, we'll go from there. And I'm going to show you the 25-06, which is my pride and joy. Okay, I'm going to take the camera off, and uh, we'll go back. I'll get them up, and we'll get ready to go. Okay, this is a 22 long rifle, uh, Ruger precision rifle. It uh, has a uh, Caldwell bipod and a vortex scope. The vortex scope is, I don't know if you can read that or not. Anyway, it's a 4x18. Uh, I put a lot of rounds through this. Uh, it's actually quite a good, in and actually what it shoots best what it likes best is the uh, suppressor ammunition. Uh, the American Eagle, I think it is. Or Federal, I forget which now. I think it's American Eagle suppressor. Anyway, and now I have the same thing in the mag, and it's got a different scope on it. I'll pull that one up and show it to you. All right, this is the 22 uh, Magnum. Same thing, like I said before, it's a Ruger RPR. The uh, scope on this is a Firefield because uh, at the time being it was all like at a 4, you can tell that it's sitting up pretty high. And it's a, uh, an 8 by 32 And it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a pretty decent scope, I was surprised. I mean, even at that it was still like, what, I don't remember anymore. I bought it so long ago. Anyway, it's got the same Caldwell bipod on it. Uh, I like the way this one shoots. And you know, I've, I've shot a couple of ammos with it. And it doesn't seem doesn't seem to make any difference. It seems like it'll eat just about anything you throw in it. Uh, so that's it. Anyway, let's go on from there. Okay, this is the uh, Savage Model 12 204. It's a beast. It's a heavy sucker. And uh, the Vortex scope on this is a 4x24. Uh, I really like this rifle. This thing shoots real, real well. And you can see that uh, it has an AccuTrigger. I can't remember what brand of uh, bipod is on it. It doesn't really much matter. But you can tell that it's got the heavy barrel. And my little... I did the, uh, the uh, stock some time back. i will brag about that a little bit. And uh, it had a lot of compliments on it. And it's something that I do for other people from now and then. Now when I shoot this, I don't use the magazine. It's got a box magazine, and, but I don't use it. I shoot one at a time, load, manual loading it, uh, eject one, put another one in, close the bolt and shoot. Single shot, that's the way I use it. That way it makes me concentrate and pay attention to details and all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's go on to my pride and joy. This is my Browning Model 78 falling block. Uh, this thing is in immaculate condition still. I take very, very good care of this rifle. Uh, the scope is a Vortex 6x24 Viper. Uh, 
I guess we you know and with this this rifle has got no marks, no scratches. This McCart this thing looks like it's almost brand new, and uh, because <laughs> actually it is. I don't think there's been a hundred rounds fired through this rifle in total. It was built and it was 1974. Uh, my estimate would be that this uh, rifle is probably worth somewhere between three and four thousand dollars including the scope. The scope was what eight hundred so yeah it's a it's in really really nice shape and I take very good care of it and I'm very proud of it and it's probably most of you would be if you had one because in this kind of condition <laughs> you just don't see them. Anyway that's it I hope this was interesting to some of you if not I'm sorry but uh, you know, I just wanted to let people know why I shoot and what I shoot. And uh, a little bit later on, I'll, I'll take this one out and do a little video on shooting it. Okay? Till then, we'll see you later. Subscribe. Make an old man happy. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is a little bit of an addendum. Uh, since I did the uh, original video, I picked up another rifle. It's a uh, 223 VTR with the uh, with a really really nice case uh, aircraft aluminum case that probably well from what I understand what I can figure out is about a three hundred dollar case <laughs> and I got it picked up at an estate sale uh, for two hundred fifty dollars for the whole thing and uh, I'll show it to you now this is the case it's uh, like I say it's a really really high quality case it's water watertight the whole nine yards and let's open her up And there's the rifle. Came with a uh, Vortex scope on it. It's even got a place for the bolt, as you can see. And it's a it's a very nice case. The uh, scope on it is not quite what I want, but uh, it came with it, so I'm just going to try it out for a while and see how it works. It's actually a what a three to. 3 to 12. It's not quite as much glass as I'd like to have, but uh, that's what it is. And it, the thing looks virtually brand new. I don't think it's hardly even been shot at all. So, anyway. Who knows how, Who knows the story behind it? I don't. I don't uh, intend to try to find out. Anyway, that's it.